Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another couple of Christmas cards to share with you guys. So I am starting off with Simon Says Stamps Soft Navy Cardstock and I'm just going to cut a couple pieces that are four and a quarter by five and a half. So cut the eight and a half by eleven sheet in half and then cut it half in half again. So after I have those cut down, I am going to use my anti-static powder tool on both pieces, uh, brush off the excess, and then do my sort of go-to, how I almost always use background stamps like this, is I just flip it over so it's face up on my desk, and then I'm inking it up with Simon's Clear Embossing Ink, and then just flipping the cardstock onto it. And then I'm just using some scratch paper just to keep the embossing ink from getting on my hands. It doesn't really bother me if I do. However, having sticky ink on my hands and then handling the cardstock, you could end up with a bit of a mess. So I'm coating the pieces with Simon's uh, Detail Gold embossing powder. And I'm going to do both pieces. So stamping, like inking up, coating with the embossing powder, and then I'll just melt them at the same time because that way... My heat tool will be good and hot and it's like good to go. And this is definitely a card where you can like mass produce if you wanted to do a bunch of them. And another one where you could do different colors as well. I purposely chose blue. I just, I had this idea in my head, but this would look gorgeous on red, black, like any, really any just dark color for Christmas. It would, heck, it would look gorgeous on white. Anything, anything works with gold. Anyway, anyway, I went with blue this time. So melted it with my heat tool. Like I always do, I tilt it back and forth in the light to make sure that any areas that look like grainy get hit with the heat tool so that they're all properly melted. And then like the video says, this is an easy no coloring. I'm not actually going to color in any of these poinsettias. I'm just gonna leave them as is. However, I wanna fill in the areas between them, which there aren't very many. And I found the easiest way to do this was actually just to use a Copic marker. Now, I have said in previous videos, and I still stand by this, Copic markers and heat embossing, or heat embossed images do not play well together. I don't know exactly what it is, but there is something in melted embossing powder and then something in Copic alcohol markers that doesn't generally play nice together. Basically, the Copic marker will somewhat dissolve it and you can actually ruin the nibs of your Copic markers. Now, doing something like this though, I wasn't too concerned about it because I'm not coloring over the heat embossing. I'm taking my time, like I've sped this up in editing, but I'm taking my time to just fill in the areas, but I'm not going over the embossing. I'm trying not to touch it or very little. Um, another reason too why I don't like coloring with heat embossed images and my Copic, marker, Copic markers is because the Copic markers will cover the heat embossing and you can't just wipe it away after like you could with water base or dye inks or anything like that. But again, for something like this, it works. Plus, this is my Copic, they call it the special black. This is the 110. I never use this marker. <laughs> like, I honestly can't even remember the last time I did. So I'm not so concerned about it, but I wouldn't go in and like color all the poinsettias like with my red Copics, et cetera, if that makes sense. I just wanted to fill in those areas, but you could use like a, you know, a water-based marker, anything like that as well. Just, I liked the speed and the fact that it really filled in the area nice and solid. So after I'd filled in those areas, I did a little bit of ink blending with some Distress Oxide inks. Uh, after finishing this, honestly, you could skip the chip sapphire. <laughs> That's what I'm using right here. But because the cardstock is so dark, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But the black soot, that's where I really, you know, you get that nice deep blend along the edges. So you could totally skip the chip sapphire and just blend on a bit of black soot. And they chose oxides just because they blend so smoothly. So I just thought it would just give it that little extra something. So I blended those on with the mini ink blending tools and I'm just working on my waffle flower water media mat here because it's just quick and simple. And then I cleaned off my mat and then I'm also wiping both of these just using my little flower sack cloth, like a microfiber cloth or paper towel will work just to remove any of the ink that's sitting on top of that heat embossing so that I don't pick it up with my fingers, you know, smear it everywhere. So after I had done that, I'm going to put these in my splat box and of course add some splatter. So I have my Gonsai Tombi starry colors here and I'm just going to mix a couple of the golds together. So I just sprayed a little bit of water into the pans and then worked that up with uh, one of my little paint brushes and then I'm going to heavily splatter both of these backgrounds with that gold um, watercolor. So I've got just really pretty gold splatter 
all over both of these card fronts. And then after I'm done all my splattering, I'll clean off my brush. I set both of these aside to dry and then um, came back to finish filming this video. So now they're dry and I had cut them down to slightly smaller than A2 size. So they're roughly like four, four and an eighth by maybe five and three, five and three eighths, something like that. And then for the sentiments, these are the sentiment strips. These are the extra large Christmas sentiment strips from Simon. Simon's released quite a few of these over the last few months. They are printed in toner ink onto Simon's 120 pound cardstock. I've mentioned before that these can be foiled because they have toner ink. I just haven't shown it in a video. I've also mentioned that I struggle with foil. <laughs> I love the look of it, but I just, I have a love hate relationship with it. It's something that normally doesn't work, but I was like, you know, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to make this work. So I trimmed out a couple of the sentiments from the extra large Christmas pack. And I'm using my Fiskars trimmer here because it has a little wire down the cut line. So I can see exactly where I'm trimming. And I've just trimmed out the sentiments that I want to use. And then I have my laminate. I just have a, um, what is it called? It is kind of a cheap Royal Sovereign. I have a Royal Sovereign laminator. I have let this, I turned it on and let it heat up. Um, as embarrassing as it is, one of the reasons why I struggle with heat, like foil and heat and everything is for the longest time. I don't, I didn't realize there was a like switch right beside the on off switch that, you know, you can choose hot or cold with the laminating machine. Turning it to hot makes quite a big difference. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> I chose gold deco foil. So I'm just trimming out pieces to the same size as each of these sentiments. So getting these all trimmed down, I'm just using my great big um, Tim Holtz shears for this. I find these are perfect for cutting out foil because they're so nice and big. So I'm not doing a ton of little cuts because foil again can be kind of finicky. So I've got this all ready to go. And then I have some parchment, pa parchment paper that I folded in half. Now, another thing I'm going to mention is I just realized after doing this, make sure your parchment paper is not wrinkly like mine is. I've, like I said, I've been fiddling with foil, like experimenting, doing different things. So I've used this parchment paper many times and it has a bunch of little wrinkles in it. And you definitely don't want that. Like you can kind of see it there, all those little wrinkles. You're not going to get as smooth of an application of foil. So either get a new piece of parchment paper or just, you know, make sure it's not all wrinkly like this. It doesn't make a huge difference, but I noticed it. But again, it's not the end of the world, but I just thought I would point that out. So I also have another piece of Simon's 120 pound cardstock. This is just going to give one something, all these sentiments to sit on. Cause I thought I might as well do all these at once, you know, save myself the time. So it gives them something to sit on. Plus it gives it just a little bit extra thickness. So there's a little more pressure. So I've got my sentiment strips there face up the foil shiny side up on top of them, on top of that cardstock in its little parchment paper, you know, folded over envelope basically. And then I'm just running this through the laminator. So it's going to feed through and that heat and that pressure is going to do its thing. And I ran mine through twice just to be safe, just to make sure because these are sentiments. So even though they're larger sentiments, there's still a lot of like tiny areas. So I wanted to make sure I did um, that everything got an equal amount of heat and pressure. So I just, after it went through, I just put it through again. So you just feed it through folded side first. And then, you know, it's going to run it through, apply that heat, apply that bit of pressure. And then the magic's going to happen. Because at this point, I wasn't even sure if, you know, 100% that this was going to work. I had a feeling it would, but with foiling, like all things, it's kind of a surprise whether or not it actually works. So after it's done its thing and run through, all I got to do is peel off the foil and it did work. I was so excited. It was like, because right now it just looks like solid and it's like, oh dear, did I just completely mess this up? But nope, it foiled the sentiments. So they're all shiny and gold and reflective and it's just so much fun. <laughs> Once you finally get the hang of it, it's like, oh, okay, you know, this makes sense now. So now my sentiments are all fabulous and foiled so I can get on to finishing these cards and all those remaining sentiments like the pieces left over I just keep them in one of my like stamp storage pockets and then I can like dive through it next time I want to use them 
So for both of the sentiments I'm going to use on the front, I am going to mat those with a bit of black cardstock just to give it a little bit of a frame. So I cut the black cardstock to just slightly larger than both of those um, merriest Christmas wishes uh, sentiments. And then I am going to also add just some gold string, not even gold string, it's gold thread. So I've had in my stash forever. I've had these random spools of like metallic threads because that, that was such a big thing like a while ago, a few years ago, it became so popular to add, you know, random messy spool, like circular amounts of thread. Like it started kind of more with scrapbooking and then all of us card makers kind of took it up and then it kind of stopped being a thing. And then still every once in a while, I'll see someone making a card and they've got, you know, some thread spooled up behind a sentiment or an image. And I was like, oh, I really like how that looks. So it's just a quick and easy way to add a bit of shine, really. So I just ran the thread, just wrapped it around my fingers. And then I've set it on the card front for a second and then remembered to put some adhesive, of course, on the back of my sentiment. So I'm just using Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it gives it that little bit of dimension, but doesn't create a whole lot of bulk. Plus this stuff is super sticky. So easiest way to adhere over something like this thread so that like the foam table just pressed down right around it. And I don't have to fiddle with like liquid glue or anything like that. So I'm just going to peel the backing off the foam tape and then um, fiddle with that thread a little bit. This is one of those things too, where the more you play with the thread, you figure out like just, it's better to just leave it because you start overplaying with it and then it just turns into like a complete mess. So I fiddled with it a bit to try and tuck in the loose ends of it. And then I'm just going to press the sentiment on top of it. And then I'll repeat the process for the second card. It doesn't look like a whole lot on camera while I'm editing it, but it does give it that little extra something. But you could definitely skip that step if you wanted. So I did the exact same thing with the second card front. And then I need to do my card bases, which are heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11. They're both scored at five and a half. So they'll be top folding A2 cards. So I'm going to use some post-it tape and I'm going to mask off what will be the upper inside portion of the card. So I applied that right to the score line and I'm going to ink up the points at a background stamp again, this time with that chip sapphire distress oxide ink. And then I'm going to stamp this onto the inside of the card. And with one like this, because this ink is a bit darker and it's obviously a very busy background, I would write to the recipient with either like a fine point Sharpie or a gold gel pen, like something wider and a bit more intense than just a regular ballpoint pen, just because this background kind of takes up a lot, but I couldn't leave it not stamped. <laughs> I was going to add just the sentiments, but it was bothering me. So I was like, no, I need to stamp the insides of these cards. So that's, you could also leave that off and just add a sentiment and be done with it. So I added it though, because I just really liked how it looked. So I stamped that onto both of the insides of the cards removed that post-it tape and then I'm going to adhere those two remaining foiled sentiments to the inside of each card and these I'll just adhere with a little bit of craft tacky glue and then I'm also going to use that craft tacky glue to adhere those card fronts to both of these card bases so I'm going to fold my card bases down like I said they're already scored so I just needed to fold them down and then I just reinforce that score with my teflon bone folder and then once that's done, I can adhere both of the card fronts to the card bases. Again, you could leave it here, but of course I want to add a, a little bit of bling, just a little bit. So I pulled out my Studio Caudia. I have Midnight Blue and Gold Sparkle Crystals. So Midnight Blue are black with like this kind of blue reflect that I thought was really pretty and went perfectly with these, like the color combo and everything. And then the gold sparkle crystals are clear crystals with gold glitter in them, which I'm obsessed with. I've used these on so many cards in so many of my videos. I pull, every time I'm doing anything gold, I reach for these more often than like just gold crystals. So anyway, sprinkled those onto both backgrounds, of course. And then I'm just going to adhere these into place with little dabs of the craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my jewel picker and then pressing them into place. And then once that's done, these cards are complete. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to all the supplies I use. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping, for commenting, all of it. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.